Good morning, Go Church. I always feel like we're in a movie because, like, Fred's like, go, and I'm like, yeah, action. Um, so <laughs> it's good to see you guys this morning. Um, how was everybody's week? Good? Yeah, give me, like, th- like great, middle, or eh. Eh, okay, a few, a few, yeah, a few middles, okay, all right. Somewhere in, like, three quarters. Josiah had to wake up at 6.30, so he was like, boo. <laughs> If you guys would, let's stand to our feet this morning. We're so excited to have each and every one of you guys here. Um, We're just going to go right into worship this morning. As you may have noticed, I'm not Pastor Clinton. I'm sorry. Um, I know. I know, right? I was sad about it too. Um, But they are, um, they're out of town still visiting some some friends and family. And so just keep them in your prayers as they travel back. Um, And so let's just pray this morning and go right into worship. So Father God, we just thank you so much for this morning, Lord. Thank you that we get to come into your presence this morning as as a family, Lord Father, as a church. And and, um, just worship you, God, and, and hear from you, Father, and experience your presence, Lord. And so this morning, Father, we just lay aside everything, Father, that could get in the way of us hearing from you, of us uh, uh, feeling your presence in this place this morning, Father. Every worry, every doubt, Father God, every uh, everything of this world, Father, everything of life, God, any any, any any meeting that's coming up that's making us nervous, Father God, any uh, uh, anything that we have in our path, Father, that could distract us from you, Father, help us this morning to set our hearts on you, Father, to set those things aside and to focus solely on you this morning, God. So, Father, we just give you these uh, this morning, Father, these these few hours that we have together as a family, Father, and we just we just ask that you would come and invade this place, Father. Come into our hearts this morning, Father, so that we can we can we can leave this place, Father, and reflect you well, Father. And so, we thank you so much. We give you this time. We praise you and we worship you, God, in your mighty and holy name. We pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures of fate are never enough. Then you came along, you put me back together. Now satisfied 
thank you for this morning, Lord. We thank you for your power, Lord, that, that breaks chains, Father, over our lives, Lord. This morning, um, I just, I, I couldn't get past um, the, uh, the tragedy that, that happened near Centerville um, in these last couple of days that uh, involved a family from Tomball. And right now that family is experiencing pain. They're experiencing chains in their life right now because of family members that were taken from them. So this morning, before we move on, before we go anywhere else, I just want us to, to lift this family up in prayer for these next few moments. Um, does everybody know, I, I guess, what I'm referring to? There was a, an, an inmate who escaped um, near Centerville and killed um, a family uh, of five. They killed a, it was a grandfather and um, his grandsons. It was a family of five. The family was from Tomball. And so um, this morning, just for these next few moments, I just want to lift them up um, to, to, to pray for that family, those who are remaining to to bring them peace, to bring them comfort. And so just as a family, could we do that together for these next moments? Father God, we just, we, we thank you, Father, for that power that we just sang about, Father, a few moments ago. Lord, Father, we just lift up this morning, Father, the Collins family, Lord. We just ask, Father, that, that the chains, Father, that the enemy is trying to pile on top of them in these moments, Father God, that they would be broken right now in the name of Jesus. 
Father, we just declare that your peace and your joy, Father, would overcome that family that is grieving right now, Father God. Father, we just declare uh, uh, that you, Father, would be, would, would reign, Father, in that situation, that in their pain, Father, you would provide purpose, Father God. In, in, in their hurt, Father, that you would provide your healing, Father, that only you could bring, Father God. Lord, we just pray for the Tomball community, Father. We pray for Tomball as a whole, God. Father, we just we pray against any fear, Father, that this would, would that the enemy would try to put on Tomball, Father, because of this, Lord. Father, you you tell us that because of what Jesus did for us on the cross, we have authority, Father God. And so we stand on the sacrifice of Jesus this morning and we pray and declare that our community, Father, is 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 focused on you in these moments, Father God. Father, we thank you for your presence, Lord, that brings freedom. We thank you that you are a God who breaks chains, Father. And so will you fulfill that promise this morning to the Collins family, Lord? Father, we're so grateful for who you are, God. We're thankful uh, for just your love and your, your goodness and your mercy that you have over us, Father God. So we stand in that this morning. We stand in the gap for that family, God. We don't, we don't know them. We don't have a relationship with them, Father God, but... Those are your sons and your daughters, God. We know that you are, 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 are grieving with them this morning, God. So help us, Father, to, to keep them in our hearts and in our minds for these next few days, Father. To lift them up in prayer when we think about them, God. And so we just thank you so much for who you are. We thank you for, for your worship, for, for the worship that we had this morning, God. I, I just, I, I pray and that it was a, a sweet fragrance, Father, unto you. So, Father, we love you, we praise you, God, and we worship you. In your mighty and holy name we pray. And everybody said, amen, amen, amen. amen. Can we give the Lord a hand clap this morning? Um, if you would, um, just remain standing or stand to your feet if you've already sat. And for these next few moments, could we just hug our family here um, at Go Church Tomball? Could you just give somebody a hug that you haven't seen in a while? Greet each other. Um, tell them, I'm so glad to see you this morning. Um, go find somebody you haven't seen. We've got some families in the house that have been gone for a little bit. Give them a hug. Tell them you missed them. All right, all right. Break it up. Get back to your seats. Sit down. Just kidding. <laughs> all right, all right. This morning, um, we have a few announcements as we continue on. Um, firstly, um, welcome to our families who had been gone for a little while. Um, the the Hogs, it's good to see you guys this morning. We're excited that you guys are back with us. Don't know if, uh, yeah. You excited? Yeah? Isaiah's not feeling good. Poor guy. Oh. Um, this morning, uh, if we could, or I guess we're going to go into announcements. Um, first, if we have any visitors, I think we're all, we're all familiar this morning with, with who's in the house. Um, next, we have Change for Missions. Uh, we are giving to bless um, Turkey and Belize. Um, so if you have any change, be sure that you bring some um, next Sunday so we can make sure that we are just continuing to sow into the nations of Turkey and Belize as well. Um, if you would just share our stream on Facebook. Um, if you don't like, if you haven't liked our, our page on, on, on Facebook or Instagram, please be sure to do those things. Make sure to follow us on YouTube as well. Subscribe um, so that you are always getting the latest messages. 
Um, we are having a church-wide picnic on Sunday, June 19th, um, and it'll be right after service. It'll kind of be to s celebrate Father's Day, and so um, please be make plans to come. Um, we'll have more details on what that looks like and what you need to bring and all that stuff, I believe, next week, and so just be on the lookout for those details as well. Um, and then next we have tithe, um, just, or uh, somebody. Uh, Dane, would you mind getting Dorothy from the back real quick? Um, tithe here at Go Church, we have four ways to give. Um, we have online, we have texting, we have in person, or through the mail as well. Um, I think everybody's pretty familiar with those things, but if not, they are up here. Um, if you have any questions about those, just please let us know. Um, we uh, just super appreciate you guys and your giving um, to to Go Church, and, and more more so to the Lord. Um, and so your hearts and you guys have always, you know, just done a great job at that. And so I just wanted to commend you guys on that this morning. Yes, ma'am. Oh, she's right there. She's, she's coming. Yeah. Um, so this, this morning, uh, let's pray for, for the tithes and offerings, and then we'll, we'll jump right in this morning. So Jesus, I just thank you so much for um, your people. Father, I thank you so much for these tithes and offerings that we're about to take up. Father, I just pray that you would just bless them and multiply them, Father God. I pray that um, the the different areas, Father, that they'll be dispersed to, Father, to use, God, that those, that those would prosper, God, that they would affect people and touch people's lives, Father, for you, that they would come to know you, Father, because of of, of the resources, Father, that these, that these tithes, Father, will be sown into. And so I just thank you so much for what you're doing. Um, just in your kingdom, I thank you what you're doing in Go Church Tomball, Father, and we just, we lift you up and we praise you this morning. In your mighty and holy name we pray. And everybody said, amen, amen. So before we jump into the word this morning, um, we have somebody that um, needs some honor in the room that we did not honor a few weeks ago because they weren't here um, because they were dealing with sickness. And so Dorothy, hello. Good to see you. Um, Dorothy is, has just graduated um, from Cypher High School. Would you come on up here, Dorothy? Yeah. Josh got to be embarrassed a couple weeks ago, so it's your turn now. So congratulations. Um, he, uh, she, sorry, Dorothy is graduating. Or she just graduated from Cypher High School. Um, she plans to attend Lone Star College to study health science. Oh, this is it. Yes. This is the program. You got that out so quickly. <laughs> you had that ready to go. Um, and so, Dorothy, um, this morning, we just wanted to, first of all, congratulate you on, on um, graduating. And we also wanted to present this Bible to oh, you um, yeah. for these next, yeah, as you step into this new season um, that, you know, you would always be focused on God's word and what he says about you and your future and about everything that you go through. And, 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 and so we just wanted to pray for you this morning, if that's okay. Yeah, if you guys would just extend your hands to Dorothy this morning. Father God, we just thank you for Dorothy, Lord. We thank you for her life. Father, we thank you for the plans that you have for her, Father, in this next season, Lord. Father, I pray that as she steps into college, Father, that she would not be fearful, Father, not be afraid, not be unsure of what's to come, Father, but that she would trust wholly and fully in you, Father, and, and the plans and purposes that you have for her life, God. Father, I just pray that you would just send encouragement, Father, when it's needed. Lord, I pray that you would surround her with friends in school, Father, that are going to to point her to you, Father. Point her to your word, Father. Point, your, point her to what you say about her and what she what she is going through, Father God. And so we just thank you so much for her life. Father, I thank you for just the great mother that she is to Isaiah, Father. I thank you for the light that she is, Father, everywhere that she goes. And I just declare that that would just continue in this next season of her life. Bless her, Father. Bless her steps. Ordain her steps, Father, that everywhere she goes, Father, would be planned of you, Father. And so we thank you for her. We, we, we worship you for your goodness over her life. In your mighty and holy name we pray. And everybody said, amen, amen. If you guys could give it up for Dorothy. Oh, you need a picture? What's that? Yeah, yeah, she, she sent them to me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> There you go. Awesome. So this morning, um, we have a special guest bringing the word this morning on today, Pentecost Sunday. Um, so if you guys get, would give it up for our brother Rob as he comes up to preach the word. That was an awkward <laughs> Come on here. Leave it off. That had to be my wife. She don't want to hear me. She don't want to hear me. She got, she got to hear me practicing last night at home. So, all right. 
right. Well, as Pastor Edgar just mentioned, uh, today is Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost Sunday. So we'll get into a little bit of discussion on what that is, uh, as well as what God wants to do today. So the title of today's message, if you're taking notes, is Pentecost, a new day. Pentecost was a, a Jewish celebration, also known as the Feast of Weeks or Shavuot. Uh, Shavuot being the Hebrew word for weeks. Feast of Pentecost. See, as described in Leviticus 23, it's to take place 50 days, which basically is seven weeks, seven weeks, 49 days, after the Passover. And the Greek word Pentecostos means 50th. So it's all, it's all pretty simple once you actually understand it. It's not a bunch of weird words. It's just, just the Greek and the, all that uh, we translate it or transliterate it in our own languages. And it was primarily a thanksgiving for the first fruits of the wheat harvest. Uh, in fact, the feast is also known as the Feast of the Harvest, as well as the Day of the First Fruit. So it's one holiday with 400 different names. So just to confuse you, it's all the same thing. Traditional uh, rabbinic teachings also mark this as the date uh, that the Torah was revealed to Moses and the Israelites on Mount Sinai. So Shavuot also became a celebration that gives thanks for the Torah. So now that we have a little historical, uh, there we go, a little historical background on the meaning of the feast, uh, let's go ahead and look at a timeline uh, from the resurrection of Jesus to the day of Pentecost, and we're going to see uh, a theme throughout uh, the, this timeline here. First, we see Mary Magdalene uh, in John 20 as she meets the resurrected Lord at his tomb, and at first she doesn't recognize him, right? She thinks he's the gardener. Next, in Luke 24, we see two disciples on their way to a village called Emmaus. Again, they talk with the resurrected Jesus, yet don't immediately recognize him. In John 20, we see Jesus appear in the room with the disciples who had been hiding behind locked doors. Now, he had to show them the scars in his wrists and feet to prove who he was. In that same chapter, a week later, Jesus appeared behind locked doors again, this time in front of Thomas, who wasn't there the first time. He had said he wouldn't believe until he touched Jesus' scars. And our merciful Lord graciously obliged this doubting disciple. In John 21, we see Peter and the fellas, still reeling from doubt, decide to go fishing. I mean, what else are they going to do, right? Jesus appears on the shore, and again, they, they don't recognize him. So Jesus asks him, y'all catch anything? Now see, I'm from South Louisiana. I spent my childhood fishing, so I got to paraphrase it a little bit to, to sound like my people. They hadn't caught anything. So Jesus tells them to cast their net on the right side of the boat. They acquiesce, and upon catching so many fish that they couldn't even pull the net back up, they finally realized just who it was they were talking to. And Jesus invites them to eat a breakfast of fish that he hadn't even gotten from them yet. So again, we see a miracle. They're still out there with the fish, yet he's cooking fish on the shore. Finally, in Luke 24... We see Jesus ascending to heaven with the worshiping apostles fully aware of who he was. Over the course of 40 days, Jesus appeared to his disciples on numerous occasions and at one point appeared to over 500 people at once, according to 1 Corinthians 15, 6. Now, we can only imagine what it was like for the disciples and the emotional roller coaster that, the, that, that they went through during this time. But I think the text does give us some insight. It says that they were visibly downcast. They were crying. They were in despair. They had joy. They were bewildered. They were perplexed. 
Like Thomas, they had doubt. They were trembling. They were afraid. They had anxiety. They had excitement, amazement, and they were overjoyed. John 21, once they realized who it was, that it was Jesus on the shore. Verse 7, then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. Verse 8, the other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. Now, we read this text from a place where we know what happens in the next chapter. But as they were living it in real time, all the disciples could do was long for just another moment with Jesus. Was he going to appear again? What would he say? What would he teach? When would he actually come around? But there were some words that we know they would hold on to. Luke 24, 49, Jesus said, I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Stay in the city. Don't go yet. You're not, you're not quite ready yet. I'm going to be sending my spirit. So hold on. Once you receive this, oh, you'll be ready. Acts 1, 4 through 5, on one occasion while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. But John baptized with water. But in a few days, a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. The word baptizo literally means to immerse. You know, we do have some denominations that do a little sprinkle for their baptism, but the word baptizo literally means to immerse. So while we're born again, the Spirit does come to reside within us. When you're baptized in the Spirit, you are immersed in the Spirit of God. And so, we arrive at the day Pentecost. Acts 2 is a very familiar passage, and I'm going to go ahead and read it. It's a little bit lengthy, but I'm going to go ahead and read it. Starting at verse 1, when the day of Pentecost had arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like that of a violent rushing wind came from heaven, filled the whole house where they were staying, and tongues like flames of fire that were divided appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And it, it, this is amazing to me because when we, when we think of the baptism of the Spirit, we think of speaking in tongues. There's no, that's all you get. You get the tongues. But this first time when they're baptized in the Spirit, they saw what appeared to be tongues of fire. So they saw a physical manifestation. You could almost call it the Shekinah, which is a visible manifestation of God's glory. Then they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different languages as the Spirit gave them ability for speech. Now, there were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout men from every nation under heaven. When the sound occurred, a crowd came together and was confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. It don't matter where you're from. When God speaks, he's going to speak in your language. He's going to speak where you can understand him. That's 
the God we serve. He's not going to speak in some mystic way that you're not going to grasp. He's going to speak to you in your language to make sure that you know exactly what he's saying. Oh, what a good God. And they were astounded and amazed, saying, Look, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that each of us can hear in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, those who live in Mesopotamia and Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Ooh, that was new. Jews and proselytes. Hmm. God came for the whole world. Some of the Jews didn't understand that at the time, that God wanted to save everybody. Even though they were his special chosen people, God wanted all of us. So Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking the magnificent acts of God in our own languages. They were all astounded and perplexed, saying to one another, could this be? What could this be? But some sneered and said they're full of new wine. Hmm. But Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, proclaimed to them. And he goes on to explain what had happened, who this Jesus was that they had just crucified. Leading to the salvation of 3,000 souls that very day. Hmm. Two observations from the day of Pentecost. Number one, when we desire to be with God, He shows up. Hmm. I like that song, says you don't have to come, but you always do. Show up in your splendor and fill the whole room. I love that song. He's faithful. It's such a simple concept, but Jeremiah 29, 13 says, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. The disciples have been hanging on to the words of Christ that Something big was about to happen. They would be baptized. The Holy Spirit. And now he had arrived. And the fullness of everything that the law and the prophets had been pointing to was finally here in a demonstration of God's power could not be denied. Now, as part of the four square denomination, we're classified as a Pentecostal church. As is posted somewhere, and I believe just about every four square church building, we believe the words of Hebrews 13 8, which boldly declare that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In Acts 2.39, Peter said that the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off. <laughs> Everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. Now we believe that the Holy Spirit is still active and moving among the people of God. He hasn't changed. Has he? No. No. He's still actively working words of knowledge, words of wisdom, prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues, discernment between spirits, faith, healings, and miracles in and through his people. In fact, he, he does things that aren't even listed in scripture as gifts of the spirit just to demonstrate his power. To glorify himself and sometimes to reveal our own hearts to us. Will we accept what he is doing now? Or will we reject it 
That's strange or unknown. I've never seen this before. This, this can't be God. Oh, but it can. I'm not saying there's not excesses and abuses, but sometimes when God steps in, it's going to rock your world. You're going to have a heart check. You're going to have to dive deep and say, God, this is you. I want in. I want all of you, Lord. Hmm. There's many a solid minister who unfortunately reject the modern working of the Spirit, often attributing the work of the Spirit to demonic forces, which Jesus said was blasphemy against the Spirit, the unpardonable sin. But that's a dangerous position to be in. But I do believe that Jesus was referring to attributing it to Satan when you know the truth rather than doing it in ignorance. Even Paul, when he was Saul, was guilty of this charge. God forgives our ignorance. So don't be condemned if you've ever spoken such blasphemies. I grew up in a denomination that wasn't, wasn't keen on the, the baptism of the Spirit. I've heard some things. There's some good teachers, solid teachers. Just haven't gotten it. You need to pray for them. If you've spoken these things, just repent and rest in your newfound wisdom. And let God work the gifts of his spirit in and through you. The day when we desire to be with God, he shows up. The disciples had been longing for Jesus. Surely they ached for his presence. And he showed up. Oh, did he show up. Now I would emphatically declare that we, we need these moments in his presence to strengthen our faith in God. As Jesus would often withdraw to solitary places to pray and be with his father and... Who knows what he saw and heard during these times? Have you ever stopped to think about that? What, what could Jesus possibly need to pray about? He was in communion with the Father. What did he see? What did he hear? I want to be in that close of communion with my Father that I, I hear his voice. I know what it is he's doing on the earth and I can join him in his work. Hmm. We need to experience the Holy Spirit in powerful ways so that we can be his witnesses. Hmm. The baptism of the Holy Spirit isn't just for us to feel good and get goosebumps, right? Power us to be witnesses. This leads to the second observation. When we get the word in us, God can pour it out into others. Acts 2, 14 through 16, then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd, fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. This weird occurrence, these people that are speaking in languages they don't know. Let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. You see, the, the gift of God opened the way for the word of God. Verse 15, these people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. Ah, uh, this is what was spoken of by the prophet Joel. Peter's moment had come. This, this same Peter who only weeks earlier had denied Christ three times now answered the Lord's call to feed my sheep. Hmm. See, Peter had spent his life as a religious Jewish man reading the scriptures and three years listening to the Lord teach firsthand. 
And as Jesus had declared what happened in John 14, 26, the Holy Spirit was now calling to remembrance everything he had learned, but now with understanding. Just as the resurrected Jesus brought scripture to life to the disciples on the road to Emmaus, and just as Philip explained them to the Ethiopian eunuch, it takes the Spirit of God to rightly discern all that God has been speaking for thousands of years. Jesus scolded the Pharisees because they, I mean, they studied the Torah thinking that it alone would give them life. But they refused to come to Jesus whom the Torah pointed to in order to have real life. That's in John 6, 39 through 40. You see, it's, it's, it's one thing to just read the word. But when the Spirit of God steps in, brings it to life, it all begins to make sense. And your life is changed. See, Peter wasn't a scholar, wasn't even traditionally trained in religion like the Pharisees would have liked to see people be. Acts 4.13 4, says that. But what, what Peter was was a man who spent time with Jesus, the very incarnate Word of God. When the Spirit came, the Scriptures quickened his heart and they came alive as they never had before. Peter goes on to preach and teach from the Old Testament scriptures, using them to describe and explain what God was doing now and what Peter himself was now experiencing. At the end of his first Pentecostal sermon, we see the 3,000 souls were brought to their knees on heaven's altar. See, the scriptures themselves don't give life. Hmm? Y'all hear me? Without the Spirit of God breathing life into this, it's just a book. You might as well be reading War and Peace. The carnal mind cannot grasp the words. As the Holy Spirit points out the scriptures that we've taken the time to learn and study, these scriptures point back to the one who does give life. We need to study the word as much as we can, not to be religious, to get it in us. We need to spend time seeking God's face and asking for a fresh outpouring with spirit. May the two be joined together to rock our culture of the kingdom of Christ because when his word is alive in our hearts and his power is demonstrated for the world to see, they will be left with no choice but to make an absolute decision whether to join God or reject Him. Because when you see the Spirit of God at work, as it happened on Pentecost Sunday, there's no more room for ambivalence. You have to make a choice. Pentecost. A new day has come. You stand to your feet, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you are a gracious God, and what some might see is as dead words on a page, Lord God. You breathe life into them, Lord, as even the scriptures themselves say that their God breathes. So we ask that you would breathe fresh life. It's not only these pages, but Lord, into this, this room right now. 
We ask for a fresh outpouring of your spirit. I'm not content just to have another service, Lord. I'm not content just to come here and fulfill Sunday morning religious obligation. Lord God, we need you. This world needs you, Lord. There's hurting people, Lord God. As we see these things on the news, Father God, this world is controlled by Satan, Lord God. But you have come to redeem. You have come to save, Lord God. You have come to transform, Lord God. We ask that you come, Lord God. Pour out your spirit fresh on us, Lord. We need you, God.